guys. Last week, I was wondering what should I do for this webio. Then a person, a specific person, asked me in the comments, hey, let's do a webio on a railway that goes from New York to the southern tier of New York State via Scranton and eventually to Buffalo. And I thought, wow, that's a good idea. He seemed really passionate about his proposal, and I certainly agree that this is a nice idea to do. It's easily implemental with my skills. So the line will start in New York, either Penn Station or Grand Central. It'll take 8 minutes to go 13 miles to Montclair Walnut Street, 17 minutes to Dover, then 20 minutes to East Stroudsburg, and 43 minutes from East Stroudsburg to Scranton. The top speed of the line is 125 miles per hour, and it'll use, utilize tilting diesel trains, which we'll get to later in this webio. So here we go. We start in New York. It could either start in Penn Station or Grand Central, depending on if the second tunnel is built. But know that it'll use one of the tunnels to get to New Jersey. Then this train, I actually saw an old railway line that goes directly to Montclair without having to go through Newark and the Oranges. So why not just make the line go like that? It's relatively straight so you can maintain high speeds. So the line will deviate from the existing line or if the new tunnel won't be built, it will just deviate off the existing Northeast Corridor. And it will continue along the Meadowlands into Northern Kearney, New Jersey across the Passaic River. Yes, Passaic. I know one in my earlier web views, I pronounced it Passaic. I'm sorry, it's Passaic. So, yeah. But anyways, this is 125 miles per hour diesel train running. And I think if you curve straight in this track, even a single track can handle this type of train. There's not that much demand, but there's enough to warrant a train here. So that's what I'm doing. And it'll continue and it'll have to slow down when it reaches Montclair Walnut Street, which is the first stop on this route for the high-speed trains. It'll stop for around a minute, then continue along its journey, going at 125 miles per hour whenever possible. Obviously, in Little Falls, to round these bends, it'll have to drop to a speed like 50 or 60 miles per hour to make it through. But thankfully, I calculated all these speed restrictions into the original calculations that you saw in the beginning of this webio. After that, it'll get to easily go at 125 miles per hour. Now, there may be needing some curve straightening here, but the land is relatively flat, so this shouldn't be a problem. And also, this is a two-track line, so few three-track sections can be built to allow the high-speed trains to pass the local trains without interference. So just some minor curve straightening, nothing too major. I don't really think much curve straightening is actually required here at all but it will continue going and it will slow down a little. There are some tighter bends and I don't think curve straightening is worth it here because it's like more elevation change and also it's approaching Dover, which is the second stop on this line. Dover is an interesting place. It's like the heart of the central northern New Jersey, what you call Morris County area. Lots of business parks nearby, malls. I think many people coming from both Manhattan and Northeast PA will like Dover as an intermediate stop. So that's what I did. After that, the line will continue on west. Obviously, it'll have to be slower and pick up speed and go around these curves, but eventually it'll reach 125 miles per hour. Now, when it deviates from the existing line near Lake Hopatcong, it'll drop to 90 miles per hour as it rounds the mountain in Sussex County. When it enters Andover and Warren County, it's straight 125 miles per hour all the way to the Delaware River, no stops. When it reaches the Delaware River, speed will decrease to 60 and even 40 miles per hour. Now, where do high speed rail and scenic travel come in? Right here. A train that was just going at 125 miles per hour Gets, you get to see the breathtaking views of the Delaware Water Gap on an existing train line. And it will all be slow, slow go until East Stroudsburg. 
So much of the speed that we went from Dover to the Delaware River is lost by this portion and thus it takes 25 minutes between the two stations. Stroudsburg is an interesting place, growing very quickly due to out commuting outsources, I should say, from New York City. Many people who live in the Stroudsburg area commute to northern New Jersey, and this line will serve them excellently. After that, the line will continue 125 miles per hour, but then the speed will drop to 75 miles per hour and even 60 miles per hour in some portions. For example, near Cresco, there's a lot of mountains. Just because the line is curving a lot and it's just steep gradients and lots of turns. In fact, sometimes here it may even drop to like 50 miles per hour. But after that point, especially after Pocono Summit, the line will increase back to 125 miles per hour easily as it crosses the Poconos. Now Moscow, it'll have to drop again to probably 60 miles per hour. It's not worth building a high-speed link here because this is not going to be heavily used like the Northeast high-speed line. After that, it'll probably go probably 80, 90 miles per hour, but then as it enters the Wyoming Valley, which is where Scranton is, it'll have to decrease to 50 or 60 miles per hour as it enters a valley. And before you know it, only 94 minutes after you left New York, you were in Scranton. 94 minutes. This type of rail just exemplifies the fact that America's infrastructure exists, it's underutilized, it's not utilized in the best way. A train can only take 95 minutes or a little more than one and a half hours, including stops from Scranton all the way to New York City. I see this line being very popular, especially because it contains intermediate stops. You don't have to be going directly to Manhattan for this train to work. Also, it is all built and literally all built on existing track. Just some minor curve straightening and you'll be good to go. It goes at 125 miles per hour, yet there are times where it goes slowly and nicely glides through valleys and river areas. What more do you want? It's also cheap, and I think it can be easily started up by a private company or even Amtrak. In the next webio, I'll continue the line from Scranton to go to Binghamton, Elmira, the Southern Tier, and all the way to Buffalo. Thank you for watching and goodbye.